Good morning, folks. The sun looks quiet, but space weather can be deceiving. We've got earthquakes, storms, cosmology, and climate science coming up here today, and we are starting with our star over at spaceweathernews.com, and the last day on the sun was similarly non-eruptive. Darker coronal holes are much more prevalent than the bright X-ray returns, and the solar wind from those coronal holes is arriving this morning. Plasma density in orange took the first intensification, and now the plasma speed and temperature are on the rise thereafter. Intensified streams should last a few hours today, probably going to see some red on this chart, but it will remain in minor conditions. Satellite charging is back up off the floor after about a week and a half, still 100 to 1,000 times lower than scary levels. We did take another six-pointer off the coast of Japan yesterday, that is two in two days. And we're off to the United States looking at the lightning return from GO-16. There were tons of tornado warnings and a few rotations seen in videos sent to local news, but all in all, sunrise will reveal most of the damage today, and it is still charging out to the Atlantic with a few more hours of severe weather threat in the east. Folks, we're jumping out to the largest scales of the universe they can map here, the cosmic web. They know this web contains the material of the universe, and now they're hoping to nail down exactly where we are within the local filament. Turns out the answer is right in the middle. MW stands for Milky Way, sitting centrally within our local string. V and F are the Virgo and Fornax clusters, and we're within the cosmic web flow from one to the other. Now that's an amazing revelation in the first place, but do you remember that expansion map recently released? We've hypothesized that the purple thin line running from the yellowish portion on the left southward across to the dark purple return on the right was our local velocity line and cosmic web filament, which is why its expansion seemed dampened, because everything flowing in a current right along our line of sight isn't going to show much expansion. If you watch those special videos of ours this week, this is almost magic that this would come out a few days later, like providence or fate. Meanwhile, the fate of the atmospheric circulation and weather character over Europe is uncertain. Turns out there is no persistent trend in the circulation and the climate of the region, and that includes the one-way move to global warming. Indeed, they say that the existing changes and those expected in the models do not fall outside that of natural random variability. Now let's take that bad news for climate scientists up to another level. It turns out that they are able to better characterize the space weather influence on the polar vortex than scientists might have imagined. It had mostly been a statistical correlation as we look at some shots of our third textbook here, which covers solar forcing of the polar vortex in detail, but also the sidekick modulators like the planetary wave train. Indeed, there is a direct and indirect forcing of the vortex by the energetic particles, which goes beyond just the indirect forcing through modulation of lower latitude cells and flows. You can tell in the papers the authors have wanted to offer such certainty about the polar energetic particle precipitation. Now, they have it. The entire story of the sun and climate, the most relevant and recent 500 papers in the field, spaceweathernews.com slash publications to get the third edition of Weatherman's Guide to the Sun. By the way, as I'm narrating here, the data does appear to show that a mild geomagnetic storm is about to be underway from that solar wind impact, so please go back and check out the KP in a few hours. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.